For the past three weeks, we have been reading the last 20 chapters of Alma, and there we have encountered Moroni, his lieutenants, and their armies, combating the persistent and unwarranted attacks of the Lamanites. It's quite a military history and a fascinating story. The takeaway from these chapters may be a powerful allegory, a story within a story. Like the Lamanites, Satan wages an unrelenting attack on the faithful, while the Nephites, who have faith and trust in our Heavenly Father, are empowered and inspired to ultimately emerge victorious. It is a story of human struggle against evil and a story of the ultimate triumph of faith in God. Time and time again we have seen the Lamanites try to take advantage of any perceived weaknesses in the Nephite defenses. They repeatedly attack and occupy Nephite cities with their huge and ruthless armies. Yet each time with faith in God, the Nephites marshal their spirits and resources to push the Lamanites back. From the stripling army of Helaman to Moroni's mighty forces, no matter how persistent and tenacious the Lamanites were, God continues to triumph over evil. When confronted by the power of faith in God, cowardly evil either folds or turns tail and runs away. In captured city after city, occupying Lamanite forces are defeated with inspired strategies, and in the field whole armies are surrounded cut down, and forced into surrender. Evil and its sponsor, Satan, cannot defeat the power of faith. It cannot prevail in the face of its own imminent destruction, and it cannot stand in the presence of God. But we also see that evil is utterly relentless. It corrupts and tempts. It stirs up dissension. It feeds false pride and it mocks God as it tries to bring his creation down. Satan, no matter how wily, is not destined for salvation himself. So he wants to destroy that destiny for as many of the faithful as he can lure away from the path of righteousness. But we are not defenseless in this attack. Our faith in God offers us a mighty shield. All we have to do is take hold and stand fast. Through these chapters, we have seen many examples of faith and many examples of the ultimate futility of evil. We have seen Satan's zeal for chaos and destruction, but we have seen in the end, evil can never stand up to the power of true faith in our Heavenly Father. So hold fast, my friends. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I would like to pose a question for each of our groups. Question number one is this. Moroni spent a lot of time strengthening his fortifications, paying particular attention to the weak places. His reasoning was that the Lamanites knew where the weak places were and would attack there, not expecting them to have fortif been fortified. So the question is, can your group think of examples of how challenges in our lives or the lives of those we love can be met with godly fortification? How can we effectively render compassionate help where help is needed? Question number two. In every confrontation where they stood in direct opposition to Nephite forces, the Lamanites suffered heavy losses as often did the Nephites. Ultimately, however, the Nephites prevailed, and the Lamanites either laid down their arms and surrender, or ran away in fear. In contrast, the Nephites, with their faith in God, would face such confrontation with steadfastness and inspired strategies for victory. The question is, can your group think of examples of when you, someone you know, or an incident in history where good was able to stand up to evil and vanquish it 
with the power of faith in God. Question number three. Dissension in Zarahemla weakened their resolve to support their armies with critical supplies and replacements. This dissension was not just creative differences. It involved treachery and treason, and it threatened the very lives of those fighting for the freedom of the Nephite people. The question is, what does your group think drove the dissension in Zarahemla? And can you ever experience, and or rather have you ever experienced, destructive dissension or seen it elsewhere, that it has seriously affected righteous progress? And how did you deal with that? Question number four. In chapter 57, Helaman's forces liberated the city of Kumina. And in the process, they captured more prisoners than they could realistically control. So Helaman had 2,000 prisoners of war executed to make their numbers more manageable. In contrast, later in chapter 62, Moroni was faced with a similar problem of what to do with 4,000 Lamanite prisoners captured on the march to Nephi. But rather than executing half of them, Moroni had them covenant not to take up arms against the Nephites. And then he did a remarkable thing. In mercy, Moroni sent them to live with the Amorites. This proved to be a successful decision because the Lamanite POWs wanted to live free of the tyranny of Lamanite rule. And once among the Amorites, they wholeheartedly helped the Nephi war effort. So the question is, can your group think of an example when a choice had to be made between mercy and punishment, and what guided the choice. Now we're going to go into our breakout groups, and Paul has kindly sent a question to each group uh, for your discussion, and we'll get back together here in about eight minutes. See you soon. And so they have their meeting, they come back, we go through each question go up and talk for about two or three minutes, and then um, <clears throat> I come back in and summarize. These were all great answers, and I thank you for the opportunity to hopefully stimulate some good conversation. These chapters have reinforced a valuable lesson. No matter how persistent Satan may be in his efforts to tempt us and to foster chaos, faith in God's order and faithfulness to his commandments will always trump Satan's best efforts. We need only ask for God's strength. For as it says in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. What a beautiful promise. Thank you.